Throughout the lore of Star Wars, we see a select few Jedi who stand out from the Order and are given the label of a Grey Jedi by their peers. However, there are more than a few ways one could be considered a Grey Jedi, and I hope those who were maybe a bit confused on the subject will have a bit of a better understanding after the end of this video. For years, I too was pretty lost on the subject. Before we get into the different variations of Grey Jedi, let's discern how they are different from Dark Jedi. Grey Jedi do not fully succumb to the embrace of the dark side, even if they do occasionally touch it. They can remain within the shadows, but they cannot be fully seduced by its power. To do so would have them likely lost to the dark side forever, and take upon the lifestyle of a dark Jedi, an agent and slave of their own self-serving desires. To learn more about the nature of dark Jedi and how they differ from the Sith, check out my video link in the description box below. Now that we have made that clear, let's get started. The first manner of Grey Jedi is one most of us are likely familiar with. This type of Grey Jedi is one who's been trained by the Order, but gone to reject many of its traditions or demands, ultimately non-conforming to much of what is expected of them as members. This could be for any number of reasons, such as dissatisfaction with the lifestyle, disagreement with the Order's actions or lack thereof, or even a complete rejection of the Galactic Republic, the government body the Jedi are sworn to protect. In consequence, these Jedi often butt heads with council members and prominent leaders, setting a bit of an infamous streak for themselves, as they are generally perceived as problematic. Ultimately, they go on to distance themselves from the Order's leaders, whether by non-associating with their demands, or outright leaving the Order altogether. Qui-Gon Jinn was considered by many to be a great Jedi in this regard. Although he remained a member of the Order, he was often displeased by the way the Jedi seemed to coddle the Republic's corruption, and directly rejected the Jedi Council's decision to exclude Anakin Skywalker from Jedi training. Revan was another one worthy of note. Disgusted by the Jedi's inaction in response to the Mandalorian's atrocities, he went outside of the jurisdiction of the Jedi in attempts to end the conflict. As such, he was considered a Grey Jedi until he was twisted to the dark side by the hand of Vitiate. Jolie Bindo is one of the few who went to leave the Jedi Order altogether, due to both his immensely different ideals and his complete loss of faith in its wisdom. The second variety of Grey Jedi are those who pull a fraction of their power from the dark side of the Force. Rather than being one of those who staunchly oppose anything to do with the dark side, these forms of Grey Jedi believe it can sometimes have its uses. Kyle Katarn's philosophy on the manor was that abilities are not inherently good or evil, it's how you use them. However, as stated earlier, those who decidedly pull from the dark side of the Force must never actually leave the light side. To do so would risk them being lost forever. As such, these Grey Jedi must be fiercely disciplined. Kyle Katarn was such a Grey Jedi and he passed these ideals on to be adapted by his apprentice Jaden Kaur. However, Jaden began to believe the dark side was overtaking him in response to his actions during the battle of Centerpoint Station, and he believed his affinity for dark side powers had too much to do with this. In response, he left the Jedi Order, to only return years later. After years of meditation and his sabotage of an Empire cloning project, he had made the realization that he had in fact the will to reject the dark side but still pull from some of its abilities. Regardless, the risks are still evident, and something a Grey Jedi of this manner must be constantly aware of. The last kind of Grey Jedi we can make note of are those who can use the Force, but were never affiliated with the Jedi Order to begin with, and as such belong to a different faction or none at all. However, these Force users must not be fully embraced within the dark side, even if they do pull some of their powers from it. There are many of these factions that resemble the Jedi in their use of the Force, but do not actually have anything to do with neither the Jedi Order nor its goals. These groups could be formed for a variety of purposes, some of which are questionable in the eyes of the true Jedi Order. They can be small groups of a select few, or go on to include thousands of members. The Imperial Knights were a group of Grey Jedi that served the Imperial Emperor Rohan Fell, and were trained to safeguard the ideals of the Empire. 
They were raised to be Imperial Knights, just like how Jedi are raised to become Jedi Knights and Masters. They were trained to uphold the will of the light side in a very traditional sense, but were much more militant and headstrong. They typically view the Jedi Order as a rival cousin. The Voss Mystics also fall within this category. These mystics were rulers of their home planet of Voss, and actually were considered to have rather unrefined knowledge of the Force. Regardless, they were capable of great power and were completely unconcerned with the views of any others when it came to the ways of the Force. They do not seem to discern the light from dark, but do not succumb to the temptations the latter offers. Lastly, the Gen Sarai were a grey Jedi faction who incorporated both the teachings of the Jedi Order and the tenets of the Sith into one cohesive philosophy. They relied on the Jedi philosophy to teach them compassion and discipline, and Sith teachings to hone their aggressiveness, but not to the point to be overtaken by the dark side. They crafted their armour to reflect animals that were passive, but could defend themselves if needed, a reek being one example. They did this to personify the Gen Sarai philosophy as a whole. So in conclusion, there is more than one way one could be considered a Grey Jedi. A Grey Jedi can also fit into more than one of these categories, and can also conform to these general requirements to different degrees, ranging from extremity to hardly at all. As such, many Grey Jedi have a rather unique so-called shade of Grey associated to them. Even despite these requirements, there are still some characters within the franchise that may or may not be deemed as such, so sometimes it also depends on perspective. Mace Windu being one example. He obviously identifies with the Jedi Order strongly, as he is at one time the Master of the Order, and he has also heralded his love for the Republic he serves. Yet, he is inherently connected to the Dark Side, as are all those of the Korn race. He also created and uses the fighting style known as Vapad, a style that forces the user to skirt the Dark Side of the Force, and channel their opponent's inner darkness to charge themselves. Do you think Mace Windu is a Grey Jedi? Let me know down in the comments below, I'm interested to hear your perspective. Thanks for watching, I hope that helped anyone who's maybe a bit confused, and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Grey Jedi are easily some of the most interesting characters in the Star Wars mythos, as they are typically motivated by deals that separate them from most of their peers, and I have always found myself enamored by the reasons for their differences. Also, be sure to check out and subscribe to Rico's channel, which is linked in the description down below. If you enjoy my content, you will surely enjoy his, especially his versus videos. Well that's enough for me for now, again thanks for watching, and like always, may the force be with you.